Do you need a new industry for your layout? We're going to build one today on the Norfolk Southern Sherwood Subdivision. Hello, I'm Harold. This is the Norfolk Southern Sherwood Subdivision. And on this channel, we do videos about model railroading. We do operations videos, how-to videos, and layout improvement videos like this one. If videos like that interest you, please consider subscribing to this channel. Today's video, we're going to begin building a new structure for our little town of Sherwood. There'll be a follow-on video about installing it on the layout and final assembly. So let's get started right now. One of the things that's going on is we have to build structures. In this case, we're building out Chubb Industries. It's a Pike Stuff engine house kit, but we're going to use it to represent a company that repairs rail cars. So I have cut out the window and door openings, and I've attached an end to each one. So let's attach these all together. What we're going to do is we're going to clamp them together, and I'm going to use this item right here. And I'll leave a link to it in the show description so you can find out where you can get it. So let's proceed. What I've done so far is I've glued the ends together and I put a strip in here as reinforcement. Now what we're going to do is put it all together like that. In order to do that, we need to clamp one end together so it doesn't sag around. And uh, that'll be temporary. We'll come back and glue it in place in a second. So we get out our clamp. And just apply it to this end loosely. Now you'll notice the surface that I'm doing this on is a piece of glass because we want this to be flat. And the glass is flat. The tabletop that I'm using, of course, is not flat. So, we're going to get into details about making these corners as good as they could be. We're going to take our clamp, slide the two ends into the clamp, Line them up as best we can and tighten this. At least tighten it so we can get some leverage in here. I'm sure you know, you can take a beautiful model and make it look horrible with bad corners. So this part of the process is very important. And a way that you can tell is to hold it up to the light. If you can see light, it's not exactly where you want it to be. Now, what I like about these clamps is when you've clamped them on there, you have this slot here where you can put the glue in. So we're going to make sure that we have something that's suitable. Hold it up to the light to see what we can see. And every time you do that, of course, it moves. to do is hold the top together. So this is what we'll do. We're going to take our glue. The glue I'm using is Fowler Expert. I like the name. Never seen this anywhere else but my local hobby shop had it. And it's pretty good. And it's got its own applique. So what we're going to do, we'll hold these two together. And we'll flow some glue in there. I'm just trying to tack this. Alright, now we'll turn it over and we'll 
I'll put some glue on the rest. We're going to use these friendly slots that are already in here. Fold it up, make a final check, make sure we didn't do something terrible, which it doesn't look like we did. So we just have to wait and sit until that sets up and then we'll do the other end. The glue on our corner has dried and we've added a reinforcing strip to make sure that the corner does not come apart. But I want you to see something else. See this? Look at how flexible that is. So we're, before we're done here, we're going to have to give that some strength. <coughs> Excuse me. Otherwise, our sides are going to bow out and it's going to look really funny. So, on to the other end. And we're going to use the same procedure that we did before. four corners are complete and they've been reinforced. You can see the reinforcing right here, these little white strips. Now we're going to reinforce the sides and it'll do two things for us. First, it'll prevent bowing of the sides. You saw this is pretty flexible. See? So we don't want that to happen. Two, we're going to do some handling of this thing while we wash it and paint it and detail it so it needs to be as strong as possible. What I've done is I've taken strip styrene from Evergreen. It's a quarter inch H column. That. And I've cut it to length. And what you need to do is flex it and see which way gives you more strength. In this case, there's more strength in this direction. So I've put the first one on. We'll get out our glue. And this is of course going to be visible. But after we paint it, you won't be able to see it see it really. And we will of course do that on the other side as well. One final thing before we're done. I'm planning on lighting this building and the most likely thing I'm going to use is the Woodland Scenic stick-on LEDs that are part of their just plug lighting system. So I have to have some place to hang them. As a result we're going to add these I-beams. They're from Evergreen Styrene. And it wouldn't be unusual to find I-beams in a building like this, perhaps to support an overhead crane. So we're just going to take those and glue them in. And then we will be done with the work on the base of the building. Continuing with our work on Chubb Industries, we're going to apply a primer coat to our building. You see our building there, the typical pikes pike stuff blue, which we don't want eventually. It's going to be a tan color with a white roof. And we've chosen to put a primer coat on to give the final coat something to stick to. You may be able to notice that we are outdoors because the paint that we're going to use is a solvent-based paint even though it's plastic compatible. So we'll take the appropriate precautions. Rubber gloves and a mask and eye protection. So put this on and we'll get started. this way we have a gray building which might be okay but I want it to be tan so we're going to pay a tan over top of this. We're not done we got to do the roof. We 
have finished our priming and this will help the paint to stick in our final coat. So we will let this dry and when we return, probably in a day or so when it's completely dry, we will actually begin the final painting colors, white for the roof and a tan color for the rest of our building, both inside and out. Continuing with our building of Chubb Industries, in the previous segment, we were outside and we primed the roof and the building itself. And now it's time to paint the roof. We are going to load up our airbrush, which is right here, with some paint. It's not going to take a lot, this is not a large surface. There's some paint. Now after I turn on the airbrush it's going to be really noisy so you won't be able to hear anything. But fundamentally what we're trying to do is a light coat, uh, one coat of white may not cover the gray so we may have to do a second coat. We'll see what happens. Here we go. That was enough for a first coat. You can see it's lightened up. Surface is a little irregular in terms of its color. So we'll clean up the airbrush and we will proceed to paint the body of the building. We have cleaned our airbrush, in case you're wondering, I use Windex as an airbrush cleaner. And now it's time to paint the body of our structure. Now, oh, put the cup airbrush. The color I'm using is Model Master Sand Acrylic. Put some paint in the jar. And we may need more. Let's see what happens with this amount. Now once again I'm going to turn on the airbrush. This structure is going to be seen both inside and out so we're going to have to paint both the inside and the outside. We're going to use the same color for uh, the inside and the outside. I'm going to plug the airbrush in and we'll get started. It's a good start. An additional coat will be needed. Now it's time to do the same thing we did before, which is clean up our airbrush. <laughs> 